Today, I'm going to show you how to make a muzzle flash effect for your animations. It's really easy and it's awesome. This method does not use the labor-intensive physics simulations. Instead, we're going to be using something called the alpha layer, a simple image sequence saved with the background turned off. I managed to find these free muzzle flash image sequences from footagecrate.com. I love this website, it's awesome. There's so much for free. So let's get cracking. So the first thing we need to do is import this image into Blender. So if we start off our project, delete the cube, and we press Shift A, and we add an image sequence. This is an add-on if you haven't got it there. So if we select the image we want, and then click Import Image as Planes, and then also click on Shader Editor so we can actually see it. So if we square off and zoom in, so we see if it works. As you can see, we've got our muzzle flash now. Awesome. The next thing we need to do is open our shader editor and we can see our image is here, look. This is our image and what we need to do is make this glow, don't we? So, so what we need to do is we need to make it emit light, don't we? So we need to connect the color to the emission like so. And we can crank the strength up. I think five was okay for me. Yeah. So now if we go into our render mode and we select Eevee, we can quickly put on all the things that will make it show up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we can see now it's glowing, can't we? Without having to go into render mode. If we go into render mode, you can also see it's glowing. Lovely. The next thing we also need to do is make sure it's on a cyclic animation so when we press play it should continue playing forever and ever and ever that's how we want it yeah and you can also change the start frame if you want like here say you like it doesn't start for 30 seconds you can make it start in at 30 seconds right then so now we've got a 2d muzzle flash we need to kind of make it 3d don't we so what we need to do now is we need to add an empty any old empty will do that one so now what we need to do is apply an array to this image. So if we click array and we turn off the relative offset and we actually go to object offset, we're going to use the empty as a handle to rotate it for us here. Yeah? And we probably want about five pieces. It's up to you how many you want kind of thing. And as we can see, it's all going squiff, isn't it? So shall we see how we can fix that? So if we now press apply all transforms we can see it's now matching up kind of thing that's what the problem was it always is that issue so basically if we click the empty now and then press rotate the y we should be able to array a load around like that yeah amazing you basically just made yourself a muzzle flash it's amazing how good's that? Now, to integrate this into your animation, there's a few tips and tricks worth showing you. In order to turn it on and off at certain points, we're going to need to add a mix node. So if we go to the shader editor and we select the actual muzzle flash and move up, I'll show you how I've got it set up. Now, on the alpha layer, I've added a mix node. And what we've done is plugged it into the A and we've turned the factor all the way down and I've keyframed it exactly where I need it. So if I show you my timeline, if we do a horizontal split and we go to our timeline like this, look, you can see I've got on and off switches here. So at this one here, we can see that it's on the off position, number one. Now if we go forward a frame, we can see it's on the off position, like the opposite position, zero, yeah? So this is our on and off switch. The next issue as well was we needed to animate the barrel rotating as well, don't we? So if we move over to our graph editor, so if we select the empty that I've put the barrel in, we normalize this. I wanted it to speed up and slow down gradually. So I keyed the first frame and I did 360 degree rotation using this box here. And then I keyframed it at 360 
degrees rotation at 30 frames. This is a base measure. Doing the math of one rotation per 30 frames, I could get eight rotations into my 250 frame clip. So entering in this box up here, 360 times eight, and then pressing enter, it will rotate it 2880. Now, if you keyframe that there, at 240 frames or at the end of the sequence, and you press I on it, like that, it'll keyframe it. Then what you can do is you can come in with these handles. And what you can do is you can basically smooth out because it's likely in a linear motion, whereas I want it to speed up and slow down, don't we? So if we adjust these handles using the Bezier curves, we can basically like slow it down. You know what I mean? So it slowly starts up, gets to a linear pace, and then it slows down after it's fired, yeah? With my sound clip, I'd calculated that from 30 frames to 105 frames was the duration of the noise. So that's also what dictated the animation for this box here, you know what I mean? So it turns off at the right times, and this is a linear operation with it. What I also did as well is with this, if you look here, I've also added a point light because the emission shaders is good, but it doesn't like project very well. So what I did was I added a point light as well. So if we go into and we look here, we can see I've got all my on and off operations. Luckily, with the image sequence, it was frame by frame, on, off, on, off with the actual firing. So it was really simple to just copy and paste and turn it all the way up. So basically, every even number was a shot fired. If we go to the next frame, it turns off, yeah? So if we go to the other one, and I can show you with the light on and off. See, if we turn the light off, look, it doesn't really project. It does a little bit, you can see it here, but if we were to turn it up, it would blow out all the colors kind of thing. So what we do is we add a point light in, and then it will cast a bit here. What I also did with this light is I turned cast shadows off as well so it would actually really project it you know what i mean like get it everywhere if you look closely it does actually shine under the car but i like to think that it's it's a tube chassis anyway so the light was getting through but you, it's a sacrifice i was willing to make because I, I really wanted to make it punchy you know what i mean and then with the smoke it it kind of disappeared anyway so for the smoke I use something called True FVFX. It's an amazing add-on that I actually paid for, but it's got so many cool things in it. I think I paid like 20 pound for these, and it's a quick way of putting smoke into your scene, you know? And I think I'll leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed this. I loved making this model, so if you like it, like, like the video, share it to the people, and it's probably the best way to make a muzzle flash because if you use like volumetrics or the simulations method it just kills your computer and make you know what i mean so this is an amazing one you could use this method for exhaust flames as well if you wanted but otherwise i have many other videos mainly car stuff because I'm, I'm a big car guy now if you want to watch another video click the video if not thank you for watching everybody otherwise kick some ass on blender people bye bye